Hey what's up guys, in this video we're going to look at the best Ryzen processor or CPU for gaming first in mind. We know that Ryzen is strong when it comes to general content creations and heavy workloads where more cores have a significant impact on the experience, but what if you're not interested in anything else than just gaming? Which Ryzen should you pick then? That is the question we're gonna try and answer in this video. With that said, yeah let's get into it. So Zen 2 is finally out and it's been a couple of stressful days with Navi and Ryzen 3000 series. Honestly, I don't mind it. I've been jumping up and down of excitement since launch and there is exciting times to be a gamer right now. Speaking of which, with the launch of Zen 2, AMD is dropping a total of 5 new CPUs, 2 of which are Hexa cores, that is the Ryzen 5, 3600 and the 3600X. We're also getting 2 Octa cores, the 3700X and the 3800X and finally we got a 12 core CPU as well. I don't even know what you call that, a quadru core. Anyway, the point is, which one is best for gaming? Well, that is a good question. Obviously, price is an important factor. The, the most basic model, 3600, comes in right below $200, which makes it very interesting. Now, in terms of specs for these models, we're going to look at that in just a second. I made a whole video on the 3600, and if you're interested in more in-depth details about this specific model, I highly recommend jumping on that video. I've listed it down below for you guys. I actually tested it on a much older B350 Mini ITX board, and it ran fantastic even though the BIOS still needs an update to fully support all the Zen 2 features. And the Ryzen 5 3600 offers stellar gaming performance and if you're interested in the best and most affordable CPU right now there is no question about it the 3600 is the best choice here but let's take a greater look at it. So the 3600 is an entry level 6 core and 12 thread part. The ship features a base clock of 3.6 and a boost of 4.2. There is 35 megabytes of L3 cache and a TDP of 65 watts and it retails at 199 US dollars. Now based on the pricing, the Ryzen 5 3600 is going to be extremely popular for gamers who are planning to build a budget gaming PC with focus on price and performance. Now next up we got the Ryzen 5 3600X and what the X model has is a slightly higher turbo of 200 megahertz for an additional 50 bucks essentially. It has the same amount of cash etc for 249 US dollars in terms of price the ship is positioned against the Core i5-9600K and offers more cores, threads, cache, PCIe lanes and support for next-gen I.O. such as PCIe Gen 4.0. The AMD Ryzen 7 3700X takes the jump over to 8 cores and 16 threads. The ship features a base clock of 3.6 and a boost of 4.4. There's 36 megabytes of L3 cache here. We got 40 PCIe lane, 4.0 and a TDP of 65 watts. Again, this CPU retails for 329 US dollars and in terms of pricing the ship is a better position against the Core i7-9700K because it's not only more efficient in terms of TDP but it also has a lower price point. Next up we got the Ryzen 3800X and again same as before this is an 8 core 16 thread processor for 399 so it's slightly pricier. This one however has a base clock of 3.9 and a boost clock of 4.5. We got the same 36 megabytes of L3 cache. We got the same 40 PCIe lanes and a TDP of 105 watts and again it retails for 399 In terms of pricing this ship is positioned against the Core i7-9700K and offers more cores, threads, cache, PCIe lanes and support for the next gen PCIe 4.0 and yeah save the best for last the AMD Ryzen 9 3900K and this is a $500 beast it's got 12 cores and 34 threads the ship features a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz and can boost all the way up to 4.6 if you have, you know, efficient cooling. There is a whopping 70 megabytes of L3 cache. We got 40 PCIe lanes and a TDP of 105 watts. And it retails for 499 US dollars. In terms of pricing, this ship is positioned against the Core i9 9900K and offers more cores, threads, cache, PCIe lanes, and also support next gen PCIe Gen 4.0. With that said, let's look at some benchmark numbers and to get a better idea what to expect here in terms of numbers and frames per seconds. I've thrown in a Core i9-9900K in the test as well. Let's start by looking at Fortnite. Now as you can see with everything turned up to max or epic settings, game runs extremely well. What's interesting here is the fact that you don't actually gain that much performance by adding more cores. This is very important because it tells us that the $200 CPU performs similar to a $500 CPU in this game. With that in mind let's move on. So next up we got CS 
go. Numbers here are very impressive for being AMD, but adding the extra cores doesn't seem to do much to the frame rate. Of course, this is the Source engine, which been around for quite some time now, so perhaps it shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone. The frequency is more important than the core count. To make it perhaps a bit more interesting, let's look at Battlefield 5. Now here we can actually see that the 6 core, 12 thread part is losing a bit of more to the 3800X, which not only has 2 extra cores, it's got 4 more extra threads as well, which seems to play a role in Battlefield 5. Now we shouldn't forget about the extra cash that the 3800 also carry. Keep in mind also that there is a $200 price difference between these two processors. With that said, let's take a look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Again, slightly worse performance over the 8 and 12 part. Look at the difference between the 3600 and the 9900K. There is a huge price difference between these two. Lastly, we got Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which has similar results, as you can see. Now to get as much performance as possible out of the CPUs, AMD is pushing hard for the fact that you need efficient cooling and a motherboard with decent power. They seem to be pushing quite hard for the turbo functions here, a feature that is striving to raise the core clock frequencies over the base frequency whenever there is room for it. Now to make this simple guys, specific algorithms are used to measure the voltage, the temperatures and the power consumption in real time and from these numbers the algorithm makes a decision whether there is room to further increase the clock frequencies. The main feature you want to focus on is Precision Boost 2 or Precision Boost Overdrive. That all said, I've seen a couple of questions here on YouTube and on Instagram as well with people asking if you need a X570 board in order to take advantage of this overclocking feature and the answer to this is no guys, you do not need a new motherboard for this to work, you can use a much older motherboard if you like, just make sure you have the latest BIOS. Now to guarantee all Sand 2 features, AMD is recommending EGESA 1.0.0.3 AB which isn't out on every motherboard yet but in my case with my B350 motherboard, PBO can be activated in the Ryzen Master. Point I'm trying to make you guys that you can gain performance and you can gain more FPS. Now what's important to have in mind though is that you need a decent motherboard with efficient cooling to get the heat away from the processor. There's a video down below that shows you how this works in practicality. I've linked that video up down below as well. Now this is something you generally want to have in mind if you want to strive for the best possible performance. Uh, actually talking manual overclocking for Sand 2 it seems kind of pointless. In my opinion it's not worth it. I've been trying my best to increase the frequencies on these CPUs but I've only ended up with blue screens so my takeaway is that it's more suitable to let AMD's well grounded turbo precision boost do their job instead and the only thing that you need to focus on is a decent cooler. Now this all being said if you're just looking for the cheapest way possible to build a new gaming PC I would highly recommend the 3600. Also something to have in mind here is that we do know that the next gen PS5 and Xbox 2 will feature high core count Ryzen processors and we know from history that whenever we jump on a new console generation, games tend to get more demanding thanks to developers now having more performance to play around with, which very much impact the games common on PC as well. Now if you are debating whether AMD or Intel is your next PC build, AMD is currently the better pick right now. You get excellent multi-threaded performance and gaming performance is close enough that only benchmarks or extremely competitive gamers would even notice this and to even feel the difference you need a very high-end GPU like a 2080 Ti. Price and features are also in AMD's favor. Now to me I find the 3600 to be a fantastic choice as it offers stellar IPC and overall performance. It got 6 cores and 12 threads which makes it an even more interesting choice than any other Core i5 Intel is currently offering and the CPU is going to stay relevant for a long time to come. Now keep in mind if you have an air or liquid cooler you definitely do want to use it here as lower temperatures favor these processors quite a lot. Anyway guys, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. I'm going to be back with a brand new video in just a few days time. Thank you so much for watching this video. Until next time, have an awesome day, right?